Hi, we're so glad that you're joining us for Daily Devotions. We have Daily Devotions Monday through Saturdays at 7 p.m. And on Wednesdays, tonight, immediately following the devotion at 7.20, you are invited to join the Bible study, which is available on Zoom. It's led by Pastor Luther, and the discussion is on N.T. Wright's book, Surprised by Hope. The link for that is in the email newsletter that goes out from Pastor Luther. So look for that there. Our worship services are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and those are on YouTube. And the links for all of that can be found on our church website, which is godamong.us. We encourage you to join in as you can and invite the other friends and neighbors to join us um, at these online events as well. Additionally, look for um, start your day to start your day in your emails. And that's a short scripture reading and a prayer led by Pastor Luther. And um, those links, like I said, go out daily in an email. So again, we're just so glad that you're all joining us for um, daily devotions. I'm going to start the devotion this evening with a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. And it's the 22nd verse, I'm sorry, the 22nd chapter, beginning at the 34th verse. And I'm using the NRSV. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God and love your neighbor. They go together. You cannot genuinely love God without loving your neighbor. For this devotion time, I want to address something that I fully admit I am ignorant about. I also want each of you listening to do some self-reflection that may be difficult to do, but I pray it will be beneficial in our call to love God and love our neighbor. Seeing the news of a yet another black man's life ending in senseless brutality is once again causing me to ask what is wrong with this world and when will this stop? To find the answers, I have to go no further than my own mirror. I'm the problem. My ignorance has allowed the actions of some of my white privileged brothers and sisters to continue to mistreat and disrespect the humanity of their neighbors who are of different colors, religions, ethnicities, and genders. And such injustices won't stop until I own my part in allowing it to continue. I think that we can all say that we are part of this greater problem. I think for many of us, it's easy to think that such horrible acts of injustice happen in some other state or some other neighborhood, so it isn't our problem. But first, it does happen in our neighborhoods, our churches, our families and we just don't see it for what it is. Secondly, if it is happening anywhere in our country, as Christians, we should be appalled. But we also have to understand that our relationships with our neighbors of color or gender differences have to be genuinely built on a foundation of love and true understanding, not niceties or worse, indifference to one another. Indifference is not justice or compassion or love. Indifference convicts us of failing to love. In a blog that came to my attention this morning entitled, Stop Asking People of Color to Explain Racism, Rachel Galinghouse, a white woman and a mother of four black children, writes this. Some of my black friends have told me how utterly relentless and ridiculous white people are. 
and I can see why they feel that way. Whether, whenever a curious white woman once again tries to stroke my daughter's cornrows or another white person fumbles over my kids' names or asks me if they like basketball and hip hop, I don't think it's possible to roll my eyes any harder. When I call them on their racism, they practically come unglued. They swear they didn't mean anything by it and they don't have a racist bone in their bodies. They might pipe up some ridiculous white remark about black on black crime, the fact that they once dated a black person, the race card, color blindness, all lives matter or reverse racism. I can predict in almost every situation what the person is going to say before they say it. The responses are so terrible, they appear rehearsed. Every time I want to scream, just get educated and quit burdening people of color with the task of making you less ignorant. I have to say, I think she's right. If I really care, if I really want to love my neighbor as God calls me to love, then I have to learn how to honor the experiences and the feelings of God's people of all colors, genders, and ethnicities instead of allowing their significance to be diminished by our white and privileged culture. A few months ago, I bought some books on racial reconciliation that had come highly recommended. I started reading them, but I put them down as soon as I began to feel personally convicted by what I was reading. It hurt too much to admit that maybe I had some responsibility in this larger problem. During this extended time at home, I picked them up again. This paragraph from Be the Bridge by Latasha Morrison made me rethink my initial hesitation. She writes, if you've picked up this book, chances are you're interested in the work of racial reconciliation. Before we start, please understand this. The work of racial reconciliation requires a certain posture. If you are white, if you come from a majority culture, you'll need to bend low in a posture of humility. You may need to talk less and listen more, opening your heart to the voices of your non-white brothers and sisters. If you're from a non-white group, you'll need to come with your own posture of humility, though it will look different from that of your white brothers and sisters. She says that coming together in a posture of humility is where we need to start if we truly want to learn and thus bridge the racial divides in our culture. So let's humble ourselves and get educated. We are the whitest denomination in the US, yet we promote our inclusiveness. We must be missing something. Let's work together as a congregation to learn what it means to truly love our neighbors. Our council is currently exploring opportunities to learn as a congregation through programs like Reconciling Works and others. You don't have to do this learning alone. We can do it as a community of faith and support. This is an exciting path for us to be on. None of us likes feeling convicted, and that is not our goal here. Working to understand and grow in our love towards our neighbors might force us to acknowledge our failures and make us uncomfortable. But personally, I'd rather feel convicted by a book that can help to open my heart to change than to be convicted by my God who sees my indifference as a failure to love my neighbor. And as a church, we can come together and work on this as a body of Christ in the spirit of love and understanding. So here is my suggested reading list. Dear Church by Lenny Duncan. Be the Bridge by Latasha Morrison. And one I don't have yet, but I intend to read soon, is How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi. Each of us has it in our hearts to love and love deeply. Sometimes what we think is love hurts others. Let's learn how best to love one another. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful evening and God bless you all.